least should just yeah listen to what the people are saying and take it down. And nobody want to live in the past because we're moving forward. You you cannot obliterate the history. I'm 100% in favor of dismantling all these statues. One of the first things I thought about with Take Jamestown was obviously the removal of um, white supremacist statues across the United States and as we saw with Sir Johnny MacDonald in Canada as well. Um, and that was largely over the summer um, after the murder of George Floyd. The, there had been student movements sort of centered around these monuments that reflected um, the institution's history and commitment to colonialism, slavery, genocide, um, but also encapsulated lots of other things. Um, I would be very suspicious uh, living in Canadian society if I didn't see the names of uh, slave owners and other individuals who might have done things um, that we know were atrocious, right? In fact, when I was uh, working on my PhD at Yale University, uh, an issue that had been uh, bubbling uh, sort of exploded. Um, and that issue had to do with uh, one of the residential colleges named after John C. Calhoun. But Calhoun was also the architect of the Confederacy, the architect of white supremacy as we saw it. Eventually, Yale went through um, very systematized uh, process to uh, change um, the name of the residential college. I just started writing and then I put it in a Facebook group and I was like, hey, I think we should take James McGill down. And that's sort of how it went. People were immediately eager to help out. And so I co-wrote the petition itself um, and so the Black community at McGill had a really big role in editing and making sure that um, the petition reflected what they wanted and what they needed. Taking down the statue was the primary goal, so to speak. Um, the, the funding for um, the African Studies program is one of the first things that came to mind. Also, the BSN over the years, over the decades, really had have taken so many responsibilities of um, and kind of fulfilling the needs that the university should be fulfilling. Um, the EDI plan, which also emerged from um, conversation with Black alumni. We, we realized that like if we are asking for change within an institution, we have to use the same language. It's disappointing to the extent that um, it shows how committed the university is to a certain narrative. So I think it says what we already know to be true, that McGill is racist, anti-Indigenous, anti-Black, Islamophobic, and that their, liter their liberal standards uh, only matter insofar as they can get away with lip service. Perhaps if the institution commissioned statues of individuals who had been enslaved, alongside James McGill. Um, I think this is a proper rendition of what has happened because a plaque is not something that's easily accessible to everybody, right? Um, reading is not easily accessible to everybody. Uh, we presume that most people can read, but that's not always the case. McGill kind of bets on us compartmentalizing different struggles and resistance of like kind of isolating indigenous struggles from black from black struggles and from like muslim struggles and from and from and from when really they're all um connected and so you know like when we ask for like for the james mcgill statue to be taken down um that it doesn't stop there uh, this is not a one-stop process um, that consultations should continue. I don't know that a university that is founded on unceded territory that is built upon the backs of enslaved Black and Indigenous people can ever be transformed in a way that is truly meaningful for communities. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's not worth trying. <laughs>